Oh, welcome to another video. It's another update on the Corona situation in the United Kingdom. I don't know if you follow the news in the United Kingdom or you're just following the situation in your own countries. Our Prime Minister tonight has put the country on lockdown. Good evening. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades, and this country is not alone. All over the world, we're seeing the devastating impact of this invisible killer. And so tonight, I want to update you on the latest steps we're taking to fight the disease and what you can do to help. And I want to begin by reminding you why the UK has been taking the approach that we have. Without a huge national effort, to halt the growth of this virus, there will come a moment when no health service in the world could possibly cope because there won't be enough ventilators, enough intensive care beds, enough doctors and nurses. And as we've seen elsewhere in other countries that also have fantastic healthcare systems, that is the moment of real danger. To put it simply, if too many people become seriously unwell at one time, the NHS will be unable to handle it, meaning more people are likely to die, not just from coronavirus, but from other illnesses as well. So it's vital to slow the spread of the disease, because that is the way we reduce the number of people needing hospital treatment at any one time, so we can protect the NHS's ability to cope and save more lives. And that's why we've been asking people to stay at home during this pandemic. And though huge numbers are complying, and I thank you all, the time has now come for us all to do more. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Because the critical thing we must do to stop the disease spreading between households that is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes. Shopping for basic necessities as infrequently as possible. One form of exercise a day, for example, a run, walk or cycle, alone or with members of your household. Any medical need to provide care or to help a vulnerable person. And travelling to and from work but only where this is absolutely necessary and cannot be done from home. That's all. These are the only reasons you should leave your home. You should not be meeting friends. If your friends ask you to meet, you should say no. You should not be meeting family members who do not live in your home. You should not be going shopping except for essentials like food and medicine. And you should do this as little as you can and use food delivery services where you can. If you don't follow the rules, the police will have the powers to enforce them, including through fines and dispersing gatherings. To ensure compliance with the government's instruction to stay at home, we will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods, including clothing and electronic stores and other premises, including libraries, playgrounds and outdoor gyms and places of worship, will stop all gatherings of more than two people in public, excluding people you live with, and will stop all social events, including weddings, baptisms and other ceremonies, but excluding funerals. Parks will remain open for exercise, but gatherings will be dispersed. No Prime Minister wants to enact measures like this. I know the damage that this disruption is doing and will do to people's lives, to their businesses and to their jobs. And that's why we've produced a huge and unprecedented programme of support both for workers and for business. And I can assure you that we will keep these restrictions under constant review. We will look again in three weeks and relax them if the evidence shows we are able to. But at present, there are just no easy options. The way ahead is hard, 
And it is still true that many lives will sadly be lost. And yet it is also true that there is a clear way through. Day by day, we are strengthening our amazing NHS with 7,500 former clinicians now coming back to the service. With the time you buy, by simply staying at home, we are increasing our stocks of equipment. We are accelerating our search for treatments. We're pioneering work on a vaccine. And we are buying millions of testing kits that will enable us to turn the tide on this invisible killer. I want to thank everyone who is working flat out to beat the virus. Everyone from the supermarket staff to the transport workers to the carers, to the nurses and doctors on the front line. But in this fight, we can be in no doubt that each and every one of us is directly enlisted. Each and every one of us is now obliged to join together, to halt the spread of this disease, to protect our NHS and to save many, many thousands of lives. And I know that as they have in the past, so many times, the people of this country will rise to that challenge and we will come through it stronger than ever. We will beat the coronavirus and we will beat it together. And therefore, I urge you at this moment of national emergency to stay at home, protect our NHS, and save lives. Thank you. And said the only people who need to be working now are what they're classing as critical workers, i.e. railway workers, road construction, health service, police, ambulance, fire, people who distribute food, supermarket workers, Pharmacists, doctors, nurses. I work um, every day as an, a tool maker, an engineer. I'm part of a supply chain to a company called Atlas Compo, who you've probably heard of. They're a international conglomerates they are massive and they make all sorts but the part of the company I deal with specialize in fixings and fastenings i.e. nuts bolts screws rivets and the components I make is at the end of the supply chain and it's one of the critical components on their machinery for making their rivets. I don't know where their rivets are going, other than I know they go to the likes of Land Rover, Jaguar, the aircraft industry, the railway industry, to general engineering, to general production, to manufacturers. Now, the question I've just asked one of my work colleagues, just come off the phone talking to him, is are we classed as engineers in a production chain, are we classed as critical workers? At this moment in time, I don't know. Because I'm not classed as a worker who can bring his work home and work from home. Because there's no way... I can bring a three and a half ton CNC milling machine or a four ton lathe home because of what we specialize in. We are a factory. I have to go to the factory to carry on with my production to keep somebody else in production. You might be making parts that are critical to the company country at the moment that could be going into medical supplies that could be going to keep the railway industry going that are going to trailer manufacturers vehicle manufacturers for vehicles that are necessary and all sorts of weird and wonderful things that are necessary to keep the critical industries that they've said are critical running 
I don't know, I'm really worried about the situation. I don't know where I stand. I understand I can travel from my home to work, from work back home. What I'm now trying to get clarified, and I'm going to have to do it tomorrow morning, because of the setup we've got with Atlas Compo, and they're only 36 miles away from my unit where I work, and I work in the middle of nowhere. We've got a very small unit in a rural environment, and for me to get from where I live in a rural environment to get to work in a rural environment, there's no A roads, there's no B roads, they're all classed as single track roads. And I'm lucky to see two or three other cars in the morning when I'm going to work. It is that quiet. But my worry is now, once, maybe twice a week, we personally take our components that we've made to our customer. We've done it for 15 years, we've personally delivered. We don't use a courier service. We bag every job, we box it, we invoice it, we do a delivery note, we take it to them, we drive back to the factory. We've come up with a solution for the delivery if we're allowed to do it, which is to bag and box in our factory, to put them in the car, to drive to their factory, we will then telephone them whilst I'm parked in the car park to tell them I have arrived. I'm then going to put the components on the floor outside my car and shut my door. When they came up, come out of the factory to collect the components, I'm going to video them collecting the components off the floor, <coughs> excuse me, where I've put them. So I've got proof of delivery, but I'm having no contact physically between me and them. I'm still in my car, they're outside. All he's done is come out of his factory door, picked the components up and gone back in. So I'm keeping my contacts with him to, to an absolute, it's not happening. I'm not having any contact with him. But I've got to get clarification off them now to say we are critical workers. The components I'm making are a necessity to keep the country going for the components that they're making to supply to other suppliers. So as it stands at the moment, I am slightly stressed out, slightly worried. Hopefully tomorrow I can clarify it. But this lockdown has come for one reason. I don't know if you remember last week, I made a plea for second homeowners, people with caravans and day trippers not to come to North Wales. And you've probably seen it on the news. Snowdonia National Park had its biggest influx of visitors in recorded history this weekend. There are many thousands of people that came into a relatively small environment with a relative few cases of corona have travelled from infected areas. They've come into our country, into North Wales, not knowing if they're infected or not. They've gone into our shops. They've gone into our petrol stations. They've touched everything that they've needed to touch, not knowing if they are carriers or not, if they've been infected and they're in that four or five day period before they start showing any symptoms of the disease. They are absolutely and utterly, totally fucked it up for everybody. If they'd have heeded what was said, essential travel only, we would not now be in lockdown because of all these idiots. And they are idiots and they are selfish. 
They've put us on lockdown. The whole country. I'm really peeved about it. I understand why they've put us onto lockdown. Totally agree with what he's done. All I need is clarification now on what we can do as a business. Can we carry on doing our business? How is it going to affect our business? And it worries the shit out of me. Totally and utterly worries the shit out of me. Anyhow, that's tonight's little update. That's tonight's little rant. Um, please, everybody, heed the advice your governments give you. If you're told to make non-essential travel, don't make it. Don't go travelling around just for the sake of it. Just because it's a nice day. And you can go two or three hundred miles from where you live to a beauty spot, to a tourist spot. Please don't do it. Because you're messing it up for everybody. Stay safe, look after yourselves, and thank you very much again for watching the video. And good night. Bye. Cheers.